All right, let's get going here on section 1.5, exponential functions. Uh, here, we're going to define them first. If a does not equal 1 is a positive, positive constant, okay? not a variable, but a positive constant, and it does not equal 1 because it's equaling 1 is pretty boring. If that is the case, the function f of x equals a to the x all right, is the exponential function with base a. So you need to keep that in mind. Base a, that's this number right there, okay? That's the base of the exponential. Uh, think back, we used to have something like this. What kind of a function is x squared? And the answer to that was it was quadratic. Notice in this case though, with x squared, the variable is the base. That is not what we have here. When we are looking at exponential functions, the variable is in the exponent, not the base. So that's the difference between those two. Don't get them confused. They are different functions. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at how, what do these graphs even look like? So here, uh, we're going to get the basic idea down. I'm going to go ahead and draw it for you first, and then I'll kind of walk you through how you come up with it. Uh, it's going to pass through there. It's going to blow up to infinity like that, and it's going to come down really close to zero, and it's going to look like that. That's what this one's going to look like. It's going to be a nice little, oops, that last line didn't make it look good, but it's a nice little curve that goes down like that, okay? And uh, how do we come up with that curve? Well, if you think about it, what happens as we go to negative infinity? So as x goes to negative infinity, what's going to happen? We're going to get 2 to the negative infinity, which is just 1 over 2 to the infinity. And 2 to the infinity is a huge number, and 1 over a huge number, well, that's basically going to 0. Okay? And then uh, that's over here then on this side as it goes to 0. Next, as x goes to positive infinity, what's going to happen is we get 2 to the infinity. Well, that just goes to infinity. It blows up. That's this part over here. It's blowing up to infinity. And then finally, what happens as x equals 0? Right? When we get near the y-axis, we get 2 to the 0. And anything to the 0 power is 1. And so that's where we get this point right there where it goes through the point 0, 1. And so there's our graph. If we look at the next graph here, this is 1 half to the x, which you can think of as 2 to the negative 1 to the x, which is just 2 to the negative x. And we have a negative then directly in front of our x. That ultimately means that we simply have to reflect our previous graph over the y-axis, and we'll have it. So we go through that point zero, 0,1 go down this way and curve ourselves up like that, okay? And there you go, there's that graph. I also recommend that you go through and think along the lines of what we did right here and see if you can do that same sort of thought process over here and verify that that is the basic shape of what's gonna happen there, okay? Uh, next, characteristics of these exponential functions their domain, we can plug anything we want there. It's negative infinity to infinity. Nothing going to make us take the square root of a negative or even get a negative or divide by zero or anything like that. So we can plug anything we want there. For the range, let's take a look at this graph over here. Uh, we are getting really close to zero over here, but we never actually get to it. Okay, We approach, we approach this axis, but we don't get to it. So we get close to the x-axis, but we never get to it. We never cross it. So we can get really close to zero, but never actually to it. So a non-inclusive parenthesis around zero. And then as far as this goes, we just blow up to infinity or blow up to infinity. We can get all the way out to infinities for the range. And so we go out to infinity there. Okay? The graphs of all exponential function of the form f of x equals ax pass through the point. 0, 1. And I just talked about that a little bit on the other page right here. Whenever it is, uh, whatever it is, whatever the base happens to be, when we put it to the 0 power, it equals 1. Because anything to the 0 power is 1. So they're always going to point through the point 
when x is 0, it's going to go through 1. So that's why. If f of x equals a to the x is 1, 2, 1, meaning that it passes the horizontal line test, if you don't remember, instead of just the vertical line test to see if the function is itself a, uh, if, if whatever equation we look at is itself a function, the horizontal line test tells us if its inverse is also a function. And so if a to the x is 1 to 1 and has an inverse, which is a function as well. So in this case, uh, that will be true. I am not sure why that little line there is showing up. So I'm going to just kind of scribble it out. That shouldn't be there. Okay. But anyway, there's the graph. That's what it's going to look like. And it's going to have an inverse. Okay. And uh, remember, something like this, like f of x equals x squared, that is not one to one because the horizontal line test, as soon as I draw that horizontal line here, I'll do the horizontal line in a different color, it hits it twice. So it's not one-to-one. -one. And while this function here would pass the vertical line test, it would be itself a function, but its inverse would not be a function. So this one is not one-to-one. One. However, this here is e to the x, or a to the x, sorry. This is a to the x, and it is one-to-one. -one. It passes the horizontal line test. It also passes the vertical line test. So it is itself a function, and that also means that it has an inverse that is a function. And if you remember or not, whenever you find the inverse of a function, you basically just, to get its graph, you reflect the graph of the inverse across this line, which is just y equals x. Okay, We reflect across that line, and we'll get this function that looks like that. Okay, and it passes the point 1, 0 instead of 0, 1. We just swapped all the x and y values because that's basically how you found an inverse. This function is actually called the log function, logarithms. Okay, and we'll get to those more later. Uh, next, if, if a is greater than 1, then f of x equals a to the x has a graph that, I should have the word, that, goes up to the right and is an increasing function. The greater the value of b, the steeper the increase. Not b, sorry, that should be of a. The greater the value of a, the steeper the increase. If a is between 0 and 1, greater than 0 but less than 1, then f of x equals a to the x has a graph that goes down to the right and is a decreasing function. The smaller the value of b, the steeper the decrease. So you can see this here in these examples. This one is f of x would be equal to 2 to the x. 2 is greater than 1, and it's increasing as we move to the right. It's going up. Here, 5 to the x. The base is larger, and it's increasing. It's just steeper. Notice they all go through the point 0, 1 right there. On the other hand, if we look at the bases that, have, that are less than 1, that are between 0 and 1, like 1 fifth here, it's very steep because it's smaller than the 1 half, which isn't as steep. But again, goes through 0, 1, just like the other ones. Okay? So... The graph f of x equals uh, a to the x, let's make that a to the x again, approaches but does not touch the x-axis. This makes the line y equals 0 a horizontal asymptote. There you go. All right, let's take a look here. Example two, explain in words how the graph of f of x relates to the graph of g of x. So basically here, we just have some shifts going on. So the first thing I notice here is we have this little negative sign here. 
that negative sign goes along with reflections and is actually that right there. So you would then read this part as what the change would be. Uh, we also have a plus five right there, right? We have a plus five. That is a vertical, vertical shift. And so this would be what it is in words right there. Okay, and you should be able to do the same thing for these other ones. I'll try and color code them for you in the notes, but take a look and see uh, if you can pick out all the transformations that are occurring. All right, next, exponent rules. You should be pretty familiar with these. Uh, you have to make sure you know them and try to understand them. Like this one here is, it's a to the x times a to the y. I mean, think about it, if it was a to the two times a to the three, this would be a to the two would be a times a, a to the three would be a times a times a. And what do you have a total of there? It's five of them. And so that's a to the fifth, which is just two plus three. So most of these rules you can basically figure out from that sort of thing and uh, kind of go from there from that base rule, okay? So try and make sure you understand these and can use them. So here's a couple of examples here on using them. First is 16 to the three times 16 to the negative 2.75. That becomes 16 to the three plus negative 2.75, which is just 16 to the 0.25, or 16 to the 1 fourth, which I guess you could also write one more way if you wanted, although it's not my favorite way, which would just be uh, that right there, the fourth root of 16. Uh, but ultimately, 16 to the 1 fourth is just going to be uh, 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8, times 2 is 16. So that's just a 2 on that one, okay? I'm going to leave the other two for you to try in the video, but check back in the notes to see them completed. Uh, next we have what is called the natural exponential function, and it's similar to the number pi. This is a number that is also irrational. It's the number e. It's called Euler's number. It looks like His name looks like the name Euler, but it is Euler. And it is an irrational number, meaning it just keeps going forever, doesn't repeat. We can't express it as a fraction of two integers. And so it's an irrational number, and it has a value of about 2.718. Now, I think you know pi comes from circles. This kind of shows up in different places in mathematics. Um, and I know it's kind of weird, just it shows up, but it, it kind of does. Uh, if you're doing a bunch of stuff about... Um, getting uh, uh, you know interest rates and stuff if you keep doing that enough eventually you will happen upon that number when you're doing uh, compounded instantaneously uh, interest uh, it'll also show up in certain functions in calculus which you'll see where we'll come across something and they say hey what's a function that has this property oh it turns out that it has to have this 2.718 number in it this Euler number so it does show up in places it even shows up in um, it even shows up in trigonometry when dealing with sines and cosines um, and defining them. And I'll show you that later as well. So the graph of y equals e to, uh, e to the x has a slope uh, of m equals 1 when it crosses the y-axis. So we're talking about the tangent line as we get to it. So here is the slope of this line right there. Do it in red of y equals 2 to the x as it crossed the x-axis. Here, y equals e to the x, we get a slope of exactly 1 right there. And then if we go above it to 3x, we get a slope bigger than 1, okay? But right when it crosses there, you draw a line tangent to the curve at that point, and its slope will be 1 for that function. All right, the exponential function y equals y naught e to the kx, where y naught represents a constant, is used to model exponential growth or decay. Um, this can be something uh, as simple as for, for simple population growth. Uh, it can also be for radioactive decays or things like that, um, uh, or, or, or you know whatever kind of decay or, or growth you have. This, even, this is even used in electronics for filling and emptying capacitors. So when k is greater than zero, then the function represents exponential growth. That's going to be here on this side. It's growing upward, okay? And when k is 
less than zero, the function is exponential decay, and it'll look more like that, which if you've ever done radioactive decay in your science classes, you would have seen a curve that looked something like that. Next, uh, domain and range. Find the domain and range for each of the following functions. Okay, so basically this function here. Uh, first off, the domain. Well, we have an exponential. And remember, uh, we actually have a division here, but we don't have to worry about dividing by zero because if you remember, our exponential function never got to a negative number. It never got to zero even. So there's this is this e to the x is nothing but positive numbers, and there's no positive number that we can add to two that's going to give us a zero. Okay, the only way to turn two into a zero is to add a negative two to it, and e to the x can never be negative two. So the domain is immediately we can plug in anything we want, negative infinity to positive infinity, right there. Okay, the range is a little trickier. For the range. Uh, we have to look at what's happening on each side of it. So for example, uh, at negative infinity, okay, we get 1 over 2 plus e to the negative infinity, which is just e to the negative infinity, this little part right here, as we go to infinity, that's just going to go to 0. Because e, it's, becomes, it becomes e to the negative infinity, that's 1 over e to the infinity, that's 1 over infinity, that's 0 which means this part's just going to go toward one half. And then as we go to infinity, we get 1 over 2 plus e to the infinity. Well, that's just 1 over 2 plus e. Well, e to the infinity is just infinity. So that's 1 over 2 plus infinity. That's just 1 over infinity, which means this just goes to 0. Therefore, our range uh, cannot get... Um, cannot get outside of 0 to 1 half. It's never going to be greater than 1 half, and it's never going to be less than 0. So there's our range. There is our domain. Uh, just as a little aside here, there uh, another example here. y equals e to the negative x squared, where you square it, then take the negative. Uh, if we look at this one, okay, this, as e goes to negative infinity, again, we can plug anything we want in here. Our domain is going to be all real numbers. But for the range, as we plug in, uh, you have to be careful here because as we plug in uh, e to the negative of negative infinity squared, well, that's negative infinity times negative infinity, that's positive infinity. This just equals e to the negative infinity, which goes to zero. And if we try checking our positive infinity, so we're doing the same thing we did in the previous problem, we have e to the negative infinity squared, like that. And this is also e to the negative infinity, which also goes to zero. So if you look at this, you would think that the range is just zero, that it never can be anything else. So you have to be careful. You have to know the shape of your graph. So you, so you have to be familiar with it, because this graph over here, though, you'd be wrong if you said the range was zero and that's it, because this graph actually shapes like this, okay? And it actually uh, will look like that and goes to the point 0, 1. So you have a graph that's shaped like that, which means the range is not 0 there. It can actually go all the way up to 1. So just be careful in doing what I did right here. I'm just trying to give you a little warning. you got to make sure you're familiar with a graph before you do it, and you know that you're not going to be missing something. All right, right here is a function. I'm just going to let you try finding the domain and range of it. Be careful, you have a square root here, and you have that negative exponent. So take a look through them, and then check back in the notes to see uh, how I have this all worked out. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you.